So could you please uh, welcome Cora, she's the Director of International Peace Bureau from the Philippines online. Uh, yep. uh, oh, okay, thank you so much and good afternoon everyone and warm greetings from the Philippines. Uh, I'd like to thank of course IPAN for this opportunity to share our views. And um, I mean, you know, it's always uh, very helpful to speak after Anne, as uh, she provides, you know, the the bigger context of what's uh, what is there in the region, in uh, particularly in the Pacific. And I'd like to thank, of course, Lisa for reminding us about the, um, you know, the nuclear free and independent Pacific movement uh, from where in our younger days, my younger days, uh, where I have been heavily involved in that as well. And uh, of course, the NFIP uh, uh, have been an inspiration for the Philippines for us to be able to have uh, a nuclear-free, uh, uh, weapons-free provision in our constitution, including the prohibition against foreign military bases. Um, let me uh, begin by saying uh, that the U.S. bases are back in the Philippines. Um, I know that there might be some of you who have been part of solidarity groups that have come over to the Philippines and have expressed their solidarity, their presence during our big mobilizations in the 1990-1991 period when we were trying to have a renewal of the basis treaty in the Philippines being rejected. And so um, that could come as a surprise when I say that the US bases are back in the Philippines. Uh, um, and that was, of course, 32 years ago. Um, and, and therefore, at this point, let me go direct to the point. No, the Philippines is being groomed as the uh, next focal point in the United States designed to encircle China in the Pacific and is paving the way for greater involvement of NATO allies in the region, as we, of course, have seen in, in, in the earlier presentations that were made. Um, next slide, please. Um, from these, you, you know, you could see that uh, the the U.S. posturing uh, have actually uh, uh, continued uh, there, and uh, and of course the U.S. have actually not left the Philippines, uh, uh, even if there is the technical aspect of uh, the uh, rejection of the military basis agreement uh, back in 1992, uh, 1991. But in 1992, of course, they were. Uh, uh, they had to comply with the result of the Senate uh, uh, um, decision. Uh, and that actually paved the way for the handover of at least uh, the big military facilities, U.S. military bases in the Philippines to, uh, to, to the Philippines. Um, and of course, uh, you can see, uh, let's see, look at the next slide. Uh, I, I'm trying to <laughs> abbreviate my presentation because I'm aware of that, but mm -hmm. I am going to send share my the full text of my presentation, um, and uh, of course uh, we are also uh, we could see from here, uh, 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 given the details of the kind of activities that the U.S. bases, uh, the U.S. the United States have, have been able to operate. Uh, uh, in a, in a bigger way uh, in in the country, and of course uh, uh, the next slide, please. Um, uh, here uh, you could see the magnitude of the activities uh, where the biggest military uh, Balikatan military exercises 
uh, combining air, land, and sea drills uh, among the U.S. and the Philippine military troops have been uh, monitored. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, there might be some that we have not been able to monitor because there are many activities that big and small that has not been uh, recorded uh, even in a public media. Uh, now, uh, also surprisingly and uh, unfortunately, we are under uh, uh, you know a, a new Marcos uh, uh, administration. Uh, uh, and if you can remember back in 1980s, uh, uh, we were able to, uh, through the people power, been able to have the opportunity to uh, remove the dictatorship and have had uh, uh, you know, a broader and bigger space, a democratic space for us to be able to, of course, uh, uh, go back to um, the semblance of democratic space. But we are back after 30 years, or oh, more than 20 years now, that uh, we are under another Marcos dictatorship, uh, uh, Marcos administration, and the U.S. have fortified uh, its strategic in in Indo-Pacific positioning in the Philippines in a continuous bid versus China's uh, growing strength in the region and in the globe. Uh, so um, there's some very specific uh, signs of these uh, manifestations would be uh, quite recently the Philippines and Japan. Uh, who are both uh, big uh, U.S. allies, uh, have signed a reciprocal access agreement. Uh, and this will provide for both uh, countries, they said for both countries, uh, military forces to come to each other's territory for war exercises uh, and uh, war preparation. Uh, I, I heard Anne uh, saying that actually, and for other related purposes. It provides for Japan, I think this is very significant uh, to note, uh, this will provide uh, Japan the opportunity to, to be able to sell its military equipment to the Philippines to modernize uh, its own armed forces. Uh, so we also see here the uh, transition of Japan uh, from its very strict observance of its uh, Article nine, you know, that it will not uh, go into war or whatever, or keep its, uh, uh, you know, maintain its peacekeeping force, but now it is coming out as one uh, very big uh, military uh, uh, equipment, uh, uh, trade and ammunitions that it also sells to other countries. Uh, so uh, the RAA uh, uh, is another link in the chain of security and defense agreements in the Philippines uh, that we have entered into quite recently. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, this uh, initial agreement with Japan is led uh, and have uh, given uh, way to squad, you know, this is the regional security and defense bloc to counter China's uh, aggressiveness in Asia Pacific region. The squad is composed of the US, Japan, Australia, and the Philippines. And uh, of course, quite recently, uh, 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 there, was, there was also this uh, trilateral uh, meeting of uh, the three countries uh, uh, where the Philippines have significantly have uh, committed to its uh, uh, bigger accommodation of the United States uh, uh, military presence. Um, so unfortunately, uh, these uh, new agreements uh, that have been signed quite recently, actually we can see as a, uh, a strategic agreements to prepare and rehearse for war. And all these are prodded by the US. Uh, of course, I'm not going into the detail of this, and uh, and I would also say that since 2022, uh, the U.S., Australia, and the Philippine security triad uh, uh, has uh, is being worked out 
And though without any formal agreement yet, there has been an increasing security and defense cooperation of the three countries as in a joint naval patrols in the South China Sea or what we would prefer as the West Philippine Sea. Um, and of course, uh, I, I'm sure that you, you know about this, but the Philippines and Australia have forged a Bistin Forces Agreement uh, a few years back uh, that, that is giving way for a closer uh, coordination of military training between the Philippines and Australia. And uh, currently as a result of that also, is the accommodation by the Philippines for the building of a, a joint US-Australia facility uh, within the area of the former US naval base in Subic. <clears throat> and um, this, uh, this uh, of all these agreements, I would say, you know, the, the, the heaviest and, and the, the one that is really direct and impact would, I would say the US Philippine Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, because this embodies not only the accommodation for joint military exercise, but also uh, for <clears throat> the opportunity uh, and for the, you know, for the US to be able to maintain a, a base within the base, uh, meaning um, um, concretely, uh, what is happening now is that <laughs> these military facilities that are exclusively under the uh, supervision of the United States is actually established inside Philippine military facilities. So in effect, uh, this is militarizing, militarizing the whole archipelago and urging the Filipinos to be ready for war against US identified enemy, which is China. Uh, of course, the heightened tension in the West Philippine Sea uh, 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 la began last year. Uh, and therefore, um, early this year or late last year, I am not, um, uh, I don't remember now, but I think early this year, four more Philippine military facilities and camps were, uh, um, were uh, declared as EDCA sites. Um, and if we look at the map, uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, yeah, and if we look at the map, uh, we could see the strategic location of these uh, facilities and most of them are facing the Taiwan Strait. Okay. Um, um, Okay, let me go into, uh, of course, one of the important aspects of these military exercises um, is the establishment of the U.S. Uh, Army Pacific Command uh, uh, base uh, where they have deployed the mid-range uh, capability missile system. And this is actually within the island that is uh, uh, actually situated within the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea. And of course, uh, according to recent news, that's going to be permanent and that's going to be uh, also being established as part of the NATO uh, uh, use. Uh, and, 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 and because of that, we say that there has been a really a, a very close uh, and important consolidation of the US troops in the region. Um, okay, let me skip some of these things. And I would say that uh, um, uh, the, these developments are actually uh, uh, things that are uh, of, we're, we're very concerned about this. Um, uh, and let me go to the next map that, that could show you the activities uh, where no, the other one, the, the yes, uh, uh, graphically it will show you the increasing number of uh, military uh, exercises and war games that are happening in the Philippines. Uh, the increasing number of uh, more troops deployment, including the heavy presence of NATO forces in our region, uh, particularly in the 
West Philippine Sea or the South China Sea uh, perimeter areas. Um, so I'm I'm really sorry to give you a very grim picture of our situation in the Philippines. Uh, of course, we are aware that we are we live in extremely dangerous times, uh, challenges to which we need to face in different levels. Uh, and I would say at this point that we need to create a strong current of people's movements locally, regionally, and internationally to create a critical mass that aspires for peace, unity, solidarity, justice, and upholding the concept of common security, which I, the International Peace Bureau advocates. And I think uh, the reason why we keep uh, creating spaces like the uh, Pacific Peace Network is this, uh, not only to learn about each other's situation, but also to kind of uh, find a way by which we can uh, stop this uh, uh, increasing militarization of the region. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, I, I think uh, lastly, I would say that I would encourage everyone to, uh, to uh, join us. Uh, um, the International Peace Bureau have uh, is coming out with a resource material focusing on common security in the Indo-Pacific region. It is a collection of uh, materials that we would like to share, uh, 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 focusing on the uh, situation in the Indo-Pacific region um, and hoping that it could become a very useful resource for our discussion and for our organizing. Our friends, we, of course, we have witnessed the power of United Peoples over the years. Uh, uh, we, we felt that in the Philippines, the strong solidarity as well, and peace and justice do not come in a silver platter. We know that as well. And our continuing resistance as United Peoples have given us victories, whether big or small. They are steps, uh, important steps, I would say, towards achieving peace and denuclearization and disarmament of our region. Uh, the people's resistance that continues to grow in many parts of Asia and the Pacific, uh, of course, including, uh, I would say, a very strong current coming out from <laughs> Uh, from Australia uh, when uh, this issue of AUKUS have come about, um, we feel that uh, uh, we need to establish a st uh, stronger solidarities among ourselves and, and in a very positive and concrete way, uh, uh, continue to work out a way by which uh, we can create a, an important critical mass that we badly need during these days, uh, not only here in our region, but also right in the heartland of the empire, the United States and its allied organizations. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you.